Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and this is an explanation of the ending and post credit scenes for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, a film that shocks us with what exactly directed by Sam Raimi means that, like we saw with Wanda, when your dreams are finally within reach, they are ripped to shreds! Spoiler warning in case me saying I'm discussing the ending and post credit scenes of this movie wasn't clear enough because it will be spoiling the entire Multiverse of Madness plot in this video. So if you haven't seen the film and you need me to tell you this, go watch this movie on the biggest screen you can. It is amazing to look at. I will stay here waiting for you. And thanks to Truebill for sponsoring today's video. More about them later. So Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has two post credit scenes, but it's really the madness that comes before throughout this movie that we need to break down first. So in this movie, Wanda Maximoff seeking a universe with Billy and Tommy hunts down America Chavez for her ability to travel the multiverse. In the opening scene leading to the death of Defender Strange, Doctor Strange reaches out to her for help in doing so, letting her know exactly where America Chavez is. And so she sacks Camartage and Strange and America escape to Earth 83. Eight, an advanced utopian reality where they meet Mortar Supreme and the rest of the Illuminati. Marvel's Illuminati in the comics is a six member group of leaders like the UN World Security Council, in this case, for superheroes seeking to best defend Earth. In the MCU, the lineup is Mortar Supreme replacing Supreme Strange. In this dimension, died a hero defeating Thanos, we think, but also Captain Carter, this universe's first Avenger. Haley Atwell returning as Peggy Carter, playing a live action version of her What If character. Maria Rambeau, Captain Marvel. Defender of the Cosmos, Lashana Lynch returning from Captain Marvel, presumably a Captain Marvel where in this universe she was irradiated by the light speed engine instead of Carol Danvers. Then Black Bolt, leader of the Inhumans and keeper of the Terrigen Mist, Anson Mount reprising his role from ABC's canceled Inhuman series, Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four, with John F***ing Krasinski actually playing the role we've all been fan casting for years, head of the Baxter Foundation, where Christine Palmer works alongside Ultron Sentries, and then of course this Illuminati's founder, Charles Xavier, Professor X, leader of the mutants, Patrick Stewart returning for the Fox X-Men franchise, but here in his olive green suit and yellow hover chair from the animated series. So we learn how their universe's Stephen Strange allowed the Darkhold to corrupt his soul, destroying universes in an incursion, forcing Black Bolt to destroy him with the whispered, I'm sorry. Since of course Black Bolt's voice can level mountains, and this Illuminati lied, enshrining Strange as a hero. Meanwhile, Wanda uses the Darkhold to dreamwalk, aka possess the bodies of one of her variant selves from another universe, and wrecks the Illuminati, sealing Black Bolt's mouth Neo style, so he obliterates his own brain, unraveling Reed Richards' elastic body like ribbon, severing Captain Carter at the midsection with her own shield, crushing Captain Marvel under rubble, and then Professor X tries to rescue Wanda inside her mind, but the Scarlet Witch snaps his neck. Why? So Strange, Christine, and America try to get to the Book of Vashanti, but Wanda snatches America and banishes Strange and Christine to a post-incursion universe where Strange meets a sinister Strange. Third eye opens on his forehead, a twisted evil manifestation showing how this guy's soul has been corrupted by the Darkhold. The two Stranges duel with music, and Strange blasts three-eyed Strange out the window, impaling him on a fence below, yet the third eye opens opens because the soul of the damned remains alive. So then Strange uses this universe's dark hold to dreamwalk into that corpse of Defender Strange over to the temple on Wundagore Mountain to confront Wanda and save America. In doing so, he exposes his own soul to the souls of the damned and eventually manages to harness these souls into a replacement cloak. It is sick. America punches Wanda back into Westview, making Billy and Tommy see her as a monster. And our Wanda, finally realizing her mistakes, implodes the temple and destroys the dark holds in every reality. America is left a sorcerer in training at Camertage and Strange takes a morning stroll. But then suddenly a third eye opens on his forehead and he screams. This leads to a post credit scene where Strange is greeted by the sorceress Clea, played by Charlize Theron, who tells him that he created an incursion and they need to fix it. She opens a rift to the dark dimension and Strange, who now proudly opens that third eye, joins her unafraid. Now in the comics, Clea is a sorcerer Supreme of the Dark Dimension, niece to Uncle Dormammu, who becomes a major partner to Strange and eventually his spouse. It was only a matter of time before Clea joined 
the MCU, and her and this movie's repeated use of the word incursion is super important, as it points to a possible Secret Wars crossover event on the horizon. In the Secret Wars comics, all the Marvel heroes and villains are respawned on a multiversal plane called Battleworld. In the more recent 2015 version of the events, it was Doctor Doom who oversees this. In the original 80s storyline, it was the Beyonder. Now, there is a second post credit scene with Bruce Campbell's cameo as Pizza Papa, a Papa John-style pizza ball street vendor in the Illuminati dimension of Earth 838, whom Strange left cursed so that his left fist kept punching his own face. An homage to Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell's past work in the Evil Dead series, and Ash's infamous cursed severed hand that attacks him. Strange earlier said that the spell would last three weeks, and here we are three weeks later. His pizza balls melted. The spell wears off, and he turns to camera with the meta declaration of, it's over! Now, if you're hoping for a multiversal version of yourself that's better with money, we'll jump through a portal to help you sort your finances out. Our friends at Truebill are here to help with a more realistic solution. Truebill is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. Through the app, you can track your expenses, manage subscriptions, lower your bills, and build your savings all in one place. I really like how easy Truebill makes it to safely and securely identify recurring charges and cancel unwanted subscriptions with just a tap. It's also got some nice credit score monitoring tools to give you a little nudge when something unusual might be happening. It won't alert you if a multiversal version of you is trying to steal your identity, but it will help with lots of other stuff. Truebill can also help you create a custom budget that automatically monitors your spending by category, such as dining out or entertainment. They'll send you friendly notifications when you've exceeded your budget, and you can even visualize your spend to earn ratio in the app. Get started with Truebill today by heading to truebill.com slash new rockstars or by clicking the link in the video description. That's truebill.com slash new rockstars. Folks, there is so much to unpack from this film and we will in the days ahead, trust me, but some quick takeaways we gotta address here. The Illuminati of this movie exists in Marvel Earth 838 and this movie finally identifies the main MCU as Earth 616, a designation until now only hinted at, like with the label on the film strip of Loki's timeline in Loki episode one and in Spider-Man Far From home when the imposter Mysterio Quentin Beck claimed he was from dimension 833 and then this dimension was 616, which now makes it pretty coincidental that Quentin Beck and Gooderman picked the actual multiversal numerical designation out of a hat? Okay. Either way, this means that in the MCU multiverse exists one universe at least where mutants, the Fantastic Four, the Inhumans and the Terrigen Mist, and Captain Carter all coexist. And things like mutants, Terrigen Mist, the negative zone. If they exist in one dimension, they can exist in others. Terrigen Mist in the comics is famously how characters like Miss Marvel are created. It seems like the MCU version of that is gonna go in a different direction, yet still, Terrigen Mists exist in the MCU, folks. Mutants exist in the MCU! X-Men are coming! Still not here, but they're coming! And if all these things can exist in the MCU, hopefully so too can living versions of some of these brutally murdered members of the Illuminati. Like, I imagine this might be a one-time reprisal for Patrick Stewart, but Lynch, Atwell, wore those suits with confidence, my friends. And Krasinski as Reed Richards, no notably mentioned having a wife and children, referring to Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, and their child Franklin Richards, a key Omega-level mutant in the comics, and implying a lineage of descendants that will eventually lead to Nathaniel Richards, aka Kang the Conqueror. Actually, the recent news that John Watts has stepped down from directing the MCU Fantastic Four movie has led many to speculate that John Krasinski could take over as actor-director, as he's done an amazing job with the two A Quiet Place films, and has previously expressed interest. Now, it remains to be seen if Krasinski will be the MCU's Reed Richards in every universe, or just this one and a different actor will play the character in the future, as the MCU at this point has shown how multiversal variants can be played either by the same actor or different ones. And that same uncertainty applies to how the MCU will introduce the X-Men. Patrick Stewart just seems like a fan service return from a beloved era, and maybe less like a harbinger of other past era X-Men and mutants that Kevin Feige will bring back. And other than Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool, there seem to be no other plans to bring back like Hugh Jackman or James Marsden or Halle Berry as of yet. The options remain open. But quickly, on the Three-Eyed Strange and Clea. So Strange's third eye likely indicates that his soul remains cursed and bonded with those souls of the damned and whatever evil spirits surrounded the Darkhold. Despite the Darkholds being destroyed in every dimension, whatever evil lurks through them, imbued into those pages from the curses drafted by Kathan, remain living in Doctor Strange. I mean, even after the climax of this movie, Strange seems to be in a bit of denial about what lingering effects of his embracing the souls of the damned would mean for him going forward. And the fact that he's now at peace with this curse suggests that he sees it as more of a power, the next stage of his evolution, him facing his fears. 
So what awaits them in the Dark Dimension? Well, maybe an incursion resulting in Doctor Doom's Battle World and Avengers 5 Secret Wars. Or maybe the guy who famously loves torturing the damned. Ah. Or since Kevin Feige recently confirmed Loki in the removal of that Kang variant, he who remains was the initial cause of this madness. And the hint of Reed Richards' lineage, the beneficiary of these incursions might be Kang the Conqueror. Again, a lot to talk about folks and my Easter egg breakdown of this film is coming to the channel tomorrow, I think? Followed by days, weeks, and uh, months ahead of us continuing to unpack this epic film. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstar. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>